Alrighty, hello every folks, and good morning! Welcome to an early access preview here for uh, Aiden Chronicle, uh, 100 Heroes. So, I would just call it Aiden Chronicle, uh, seems like most folks have, but uh, it is technically a sequel to another one. Um, so, either way, uh, here we are. So, first of all, thank you to 505 Games for providing a uh, early access preview copy for this game. You might notice we're technically a day past uh, embargo there. I apologize for that. It was a combination of getting sick and the fact that uh, all of the uh, stuff that I thought I was recording uh, for that video ended up not actually going to the right place and just being unusable. So anyways, let's go ahead and get into it here. So essentially, uh, this project, uh, for those unfamiliar, uh, was essentially a Kickstarter that uh, had brought in... Uh, Rabbit and Bear uh, Studios here. Uh, so essentially they had the original directors of uh, Swakoden 1, 2, and uh, it sounds like 3 and 4 as well. Um, and unfortunately, uh, the actual uh, director of uh, uh, 1 and 2 uh, had uh, had passed away over the course of the project here, but uh, essentially what we're looking at is a spiritual successor to those games. Um, and the main question that's probably on your mind is, did they pull it off? Because to my mind, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> uh, so we're going to get uh, get into more of that here. But it's a very similar idea. You're going and collecting your slightly above 100 people uh, to go uh, win a uh, you know war that's pretty well beyond your scope, and you've got your base that you manage uh, pretty darn quickly. Now, the way that this feels to me so far is kind of like a... almost like modern reimagining of Suikoden 2, which was like by leaps and bounds <laughs> one of my, uh, one of my uh, uh, favorites as far as uh, like standard R uh, JRPGs go um so anyway let's uh, let's get into it here to it here uh, this is going to be our uh, our home base uh, at least for the time being uh, it seems implied that maybe there will be a bigger one down the road um, but effectively our job at the very outset here is to just go get more recruits for our uh, our stuff here you might notice this guy looks very familiar um, however, I appreciate the uh, the kind of earnestness of our main character here so far. Uh, the guy has basically, I would say probably probably a solid 50-60% of the time said exactly what I would have expected to say in those situations. Uh, like essentially, one of the uh, one of the characters we had uh, uh, we had recruited early on here was this sort of like Sailor Moon looking lady. Um, this one right over here who has been taken out of the party. Um, where her whole gimmick is effectively approaching fights by throwing down a bunch of books that are kind of like a 50-50 uh, shot of being either a completely useless action or a really good attack. It reminded me of the uh, the Tinker from Final Fantasy Tactics Advance. Um, but uh, anyways, she kept having a bunch of like standard uh, uh, standard lines thrown out there about uh, you know love and justice and whatever else. <laughs> the guy just chimes in with what the, what does that even mean? <laughs> Appreciated it. Uh, you got the uh, the barkeep lady that reminds me a whole lot of the gypsy lady uh, from Suiko 2. Uh, we have a thief guy on the team, or not a thief, he is officially a desperado, and basically every conversation with him was him being mistaken for a bandit and correcting them, him, ah, correcting them that they are technically a desperado instead. You've got the the uh, kind of mandatory thing for a good RPG of, you, yes, you are able to talk to the cats and dogs, and yes, it is darn amusing every time, but I love what they've done with the visuals here. You can tell there was a lot of love put into this, because like, you go into different areas, you see the cameras constantly panning around to give you a better view, you see the sparkling of the water in the distance, um, and this uh, the sort of depth of field effect is something that kind of bothered me a bit in, in a lot of, uh, I guess you would call it 2D HD kind of stuff, but this is not that. Um, but uh, in this particular case, I thought it was handled really darn well, uh, with a lot of stuff just kind of giving giving a really striking impression when you first see it. Um, uh, city of the cities that I've seen so far, they all seem pretty darn busy, so that's nice. As in, like they seem alive. You can't necessarily talk to absolutely everybody, but they will chime in with different lines here and there. And additionally, your uh, your own people will have a bunch of little uh, lines that they'll chime in. That uh, a bunch of like little unvoiced lines that they'll just sort of pop into the screen every now and then for additional context. Um, as far as its uh, combat mechanics, it's very familiar if you've uh, played a Suiko game before. Um, Effectively being a uh, team of up to six, uh, you're able to have them auto-fight if you'd like. Uh, you can modify them with, uh, in this case, rune lenses, uh, which are totally not another another thing that you're familiar with. <laughs> um, but uh, anyway, uh, let's go ahead and get into it here. Uh, and by the way, if you notice any kind of uh, little like stutters here and there, uh, that's actually confirmed to be fixed in a day one patch, and uh, from what I understand, might be somewhat Steam Deck related, which is what I'm on right now. Um... 
but yeah, so for every one of your uh, your people, you've got uh, multiple different slots uh, that you can go slot them with uh, different uh, runes uh, that will unlock over time. And actually, one thing that surprised me was the availability of uh, the number of people you can have in your party. So while officially uh, you have your primary uh, party of three here, uh, your formation actually goes a bit beyond that. Uh, so you have your front line, your back line. Apparently, you can slot in uh, support helpers down the road as well as attendants, which I'm assuming are probably going to be uh, situations where you can get additional experience down the road. Um, I haven't run into these particular ones yet, uh, since mostly I've just been doing the usual of just kind of putzing around trying to talk to every cat and what have you. Um, but yeah, it's been a it's been a fun world to explore. Uh, the uh, the cities in general feel pretty darn large. Uh, that's been that's been nice to see. Um, and most of the like most of the dialogue that I've run into, I expected I expected more tropey stuff, but they've like they've actually uh, they've actually sold me on a lot of this stuff. Um, one of the things, for example, that uh, that I was a, kind of a little bit uh, iffy about in Suico 2 was when it came to some of your uh, your team up attacks. Sometimes you would be missing ones that seemed like they would be a bit obvious. Okay, so like let's say we get into uh, one of these fights here. Uh, we actually have the old uh, the old favorite combo system that uh, makes a comeback here, and different people will be able to uh, go in combo in different ways. In fact, I actually really love the way that they introduced this mechanic, and I wish I still had the clip of um, uh, of where they have uh, your uh, your main guy and their sort of frenemy on the other side, uh, that empire side there, um, who suddenly just have a conversation in the middle of a fight of like, well, technically, couldn't we be a little more effective if we just went ahead and uh, did these combo attacks here? It's like you hit that guy, I'm gonna magic that guy, we'll see how this works out, and then the fight ends like, that actually worked, this is this is pretty cool. You just love to see those little uh, little moments like that, you know? Now, as I mentioned before, there's, uh, there's gonna be a few things that actually changed uh, between this and uh, the actual release version here. So, as I understand, that would probably mean that a few of these uh, combos will be doing a bit more. Um, so, again, if, you, if any numbers seem a bit off uh, from the get-go, it sounds like that's already been addressed, as it were. But, another thing I probably want to mention, this will probably be a huge thing for uh, any of y'all uh, uh, Unicorn Overlord fans from recently, um, but uh, as far as uh, customizing the AI for every one of your people, that also gets surprisingly in-depth. I haven't gone too nuts with it, but for example, uh, let's go over to our, uh, to our battle plan over here. And so individually you can go through every single one of them to set uh, how many limits they have, uh, how conservative you want them to be uh, on the stuff that they do, if you want them to, for example, not use items or only use items, if you want to specifically programming program them for challenge runs, you know, that's a bit of a thing. Um, in fact, I was really happy to see right from the get-go that uh, there was an option in the settings even uh, to uh, to actually uh, change your uh, the difficulty of the, uh, the AI specifically. Um, which you don't see that often. I love to see that. Uh, so, uh, is there the option to change it? I think it might have been locked in. I'm not sure. Uh, but either way, oh yeah, there we go. Difficulty. It's probably on the difficulty button. But uh, but yeah, not only uh, does it uh, uh, does increase uh, battles in general, but just makes the AI supposedly smarter. But you can also put in a bunch of uh, limits, uh, like uh, uh, no money obtained, uh, no recovery items, uh, giving uh, double consumption on things, no escapes uh, or uh, price increases uh, for uh, for a lot of different things. So I love to see. To me, if if a game had the time to implement difficulty modes, like actual challenge run options into their game, I have never seen a game that has done that that hasn't also fully fleshed out every mechanic in existence. So that kind of stuff I just love to see. So the world in general has been very pretty to look at. It's been very uh, nice to see these different areas. Um, it I did get a sort of uh, almost FF10 feeling from a lot of the maps that I've seen so far, uh, where it they don't necessarily get too expansive, but again, that's not necessarily anything too unusual. Uh, but yeah, as you see on the bottom right there, every time you go into a new area, they'll have a few different uh, discussions here and there. Um, it's just nice. I love to love to see that kind of stuff. And also, your character's rank in this world is another kind of just fun thing to see. Uh, you have these generic soldiers everywhere, and, well, unlike, instead of being your enemies, they're basically your uh, your co-workers, more or less, uh, since you start off as a... Uh, basically given temporary command of a town watch. So your job is to go around uh, recruiting people for this uh, town watch here. Um... So you've already got your benefactor, you've got your uh, home base set up, and you're just going around just doing your job. And that, 
that always feels good to me. I always love that moment when you actually get a chance to go and sort of live in the world for a little bit before stuff starts to get real, you know? Um, so it's just been been great, just traveling around from town to town, seeing these different locations, uh, seeing how many uh, little little nifty things there are to look at. Uh, supposedly there's some kind of bandit invasion over here, but I haven't really seen any yet. Uh, we just had the one guy that was accused of being a bandit. Um, but uh, everyone's... Uh, Everyone's just sort of worried about the dang bandits. I think this is the one cat you can't talk to so far. Tragic. So I actually just noticed I didn't finish explaining this uh, whole battle plan kind of thing. So on top of uh, having limitations that you can set on your units uh, from whenever you set them on auto, uh, there's actually a lot of uh, little bits and pieces you can slot in in terms of uh, their exact priorities, including things like unlocking chests. So apparently there's chests that appear during fights as well. Uh, healing within certain uh, ranges, or prioritizing certain types of attacks, or specifically uh, when it comes to targeting, their priorities uh, for every one of these uh, here as well. Now, given that we haven't seen too much additional stuff for this, I'm assuming this is everything that's here, which is a pretty, uh, pretty decent uh, chunk of different stuff here. So, you love to see that. Uh, you can basically just have them uh, fully run on autopilot if you'd like. Okay, so one thing I want to mention about the different areas that you're going to be running through here... So I forget if this was actually in one of the uh, one of the pamphlets that they sent over, uh, or if this was in one of the interviews I was reading for this game, um, but they specifically wanted the classic uh, JRPG feeling uh, for this one. So specifically when it came to save points, you might be wondering, why can't you save anywhere? Um, and they mentioned specifically that it's because they wanted to have that uh, that feeling of tension uh, that uh, that you don't know if you want to press ahead or if you want to go back to your last save point and what have you. Which, man... I know that this is supposed to be like the uh, the lenses that they're all using for their attacks and such. This really makes me think of the FFT save icon, or sorry, the uh, the FF10 uh, save icon. But uh, either way, that tension has been pretty prevalent uh, throughout all of it. Um, and again, at least so far as I've uh, gotten so far here, I'm like five hours ish uh, into the thing at this point. I wish it was more, but I haven't really, you know. Sickness will uh, will put you out of commission for a little while. Um, and one important question that I'm sure some will have: Is there a mini game? Of course, there's a. Of course, there's fishing mini games. Of course, there's other mini games. Like why wouldn't there be? Um, so you've got the classics there. I haven't quite seen the option to go recruit a squirrel as of yet. But one thing I have seen, aside from the extremely buff eggs, um, one thing that I have seen is that uh, there are actually going to be heavy units somewhere uh, that uh, take two party slots. I don't know what that means, but I'm assuming that means you can have a giant chicken or something. I don't know, but I really hope it includes a giant chicken. There's just not enough giant chickens. Anyway, uh, let's see. What else? So... Again, the conversations have been fun. Uh, I expected, for example, to get kind of annoyed by uh, by the uh, karate girl in the party from the very start. Um, uh, essentially, uh, she is uh, she's kind of the sort of a, a dopey co-commander sort. Um, and what's funny is that again, I expected to be annoyed by that archetype. I typically am, but then they started being able to uh, they they started being essentially the robot dismantling specialist. I'm like, you know what, <laughs> you're all right. Um, she actually kind of pulls her weight, which is typically the issue that that archetype runs into. So in her case, I buy it. Um, like, I see why they keep her around, uh, despite the uh, kind of goofiness and what have you. So, was glad to see that. Um, there are some things I don't quite understand, like what's going on with this uh, uh, with this uh, headband karate guy over here. Uh, he doesn't seem to have the option to actually attack anything. He just sort of sits and charges up all day. <laughs> So, um, I'm assuming there's more to him, but as of the moment, uh, he mostly just kind of sits there talking about how he's totally going to fight something and then doesn't. Given the way that he's portrayed in the story, I wouldn't be surprised if that's intentional, uh, that he's just not meant to do anything yet, but, um, it's just, again, it's one of these ones that it's just fun to kind of go around and explore. Um, so far, despite exploring around in what I thought were pretty random directions, I haven't run into the usual problem of running into some place I was completely unprepared for and getting demolished, so, I mean, overall, uh, area balance seems fine, um, so that's fine. Uh, let's see, music-wise, I'm sure you've heard at least uh, some of it so far, but uh, the music has been very nice to listen to. Uh, it's uh, lots of uh, very, uh, very chill themes here. Oh, wait. Yeah, probably the... Funnily enough, uh, despite praising it earlier, probably one of the only things I do actually kind of sort of have a little bit of a gripe with, it's the uh, rotating camera on the overworld. <laughs> 
uh, because it, it has led to a lot of situations where I keep looping back into the same areas over and over, because I keep thinking I'm going in another direction, forgetting that the overworld actually can move. So, whoops. <laughs> you know, that's a bit of a thing. Um, all right, so to explain what I was talking about uh, tension-wise here, let's go ahead and go into a new area here real quick. So I haven't been to this mine before, but given what I've seen before, I'm confident that uh, it will continue being as it was. So let's say we go through whatever area is up here. Can we just... Oh, we can't get in here, can we? And I'm pretty sure I know how we get in here, too, because we actually had a guy with an ability earlier that could blow, uh, blow rocks away, so never mind. I guess we'll be revisiting that. Actually, one more thing I just want to appreciate is the fact that you can move everything around in kind of 3D like this here means that uh, it's just that much more impressive when you see those moments when they actually re uh, recreate all of the bigger areas in, uh, well, like this. So you remember that view we were looking at earlier uh, where we were looking at a, uh, at a bit of water? It's kind of out in the distance over a cliff, and then you see it's that view right there. Um, so it's just nice to see. Like, you can actually kind of get a map of the entire town from the overworld and whatnot. Um, it's just kind of cool, you know? There's one thing here that I'm hoping I'll get a chance to show if it comes up in conversations or whatnot. Also, yeah, more cats to talk to. Um, but uh, one of the nice things about your character essentially, well, being uh, being what they are, and that is a, a freelancer that's kind of been around and seen a few things, you basically get, instead of having a lot of the dialogue that we saw, for example, in um, like a, like a Suiko 2 or something, where they regularly have to have stuff explained to them, pretty much every time that somebody's brought up something, the guy has basically had some background in that area. So like one of the early subplots is where somebody asks directions for a place and he realizes a little bit after that he just sent somebody basically out to die. Um, in which... Uh, Basically, he's had some kind of uh, input on every uh, every location. He's had some experience of doing some work over there or something. It's a nice little way to essentially establish that this guy has been around the block. There's probably a reason that people trust him. Um, you know, you kind of wonder why he's given uh, given command of this uh, city watch pretty early on, why he's recruited in the first place, and then you realize, yeah, this guy's been around the block a bit. You know, he acts like a bit of a goofball, but still, you know. It's fine. Also, this is technically where the game started. I'm assuming we can revisit that later. Uh, let's continue exploring. Oh, that's cute. You can even talk to a raccoon. <laughs> He's got like, what? What is that? He's like flower petals or a bow or something. Oh, that's adorable until he eats all the chickens. Anyway, um, what's this? Uh, <laughs> KF Krispies. <laughs> oh, I gotta love that. Um. Actually, that was uh, that was another thing. Uh, there was a whole commodities training kind of sort of minigame esque thing that I ran into earlier. Uh, not sure what to make of that yet, but uh, you know, the more little bits and pieces, the better. Uh, let's see. Apparently, this guy invented uh, katanas. All right, fair enough. Dude wants to sell it. Guess we'll get to that later. Um, but yeah, everywhere you go, there's just more neat stuff to see. It feels like areas are pretty cozily fleshed out and what have you. Um, and yeah, you love to see it. Uh, in fact, actually, there was a, a funny thing. Or, wait, what's this? Okay, apparently there's a, like a, is it like a guinea pig or a chinchilla or, I'm not sure what that is, but it's cute. Anyway, um, but it was cool that there was a field of chickens earlier, uh, where it was just a bunch of, uh, chickens going and grazing. I know, oddly specific things to appreciate. So, I will say, if if you need a random negative to throw in there, I guess technically this, like, floor plan of this particular room has been used for a decent number of houses, but even then, you see the background stuff change. Um, I'm sure not everybody needs these boxes or that staircase, but everything else seems to change in the background. It does give a little bit of a feeling of deja vu sometimes, though, that you walk in and, you know, it's sort of that same room, but... Again, it's understandable, given how many random little rooms there are. Um, it's not exactly anything unusual. I mean, to my mind, it reminds me of that one room that constantly gets new furniture and Tactics Ogre, so <laughs> it is what it is there. Um, it's hardly anything unusual for the genre, it's just kind of a funny thing. Um, but, uh, yeah. It just... Every time you go out, it just feels like there's more and more stuff to see, you know? Um, Alright, so next note that I wanted to cover, not really super relevant to the background here, uh, was when it came to the voice acting. Uh, so, again, 
better than uh, better than I would have expected here. Uh, it's pretty darn solid for everyone across the board so far. They seem to be giving it their all. Um, especially, uh, gotta imagine that uh, the person that was doing uh, kind of magical girl over there was uh, probably uh, having a hard time keeping a straight face, but that was intentional. Um, for everybody else, it again, it's been it's just been nice. Also, as uh, as is uh, kind of expected. You can just allow them to run away, um, if you so choose. So, classic, uh, classic option there. Actually, on a similarly related note, the music has been very cozy in each of these areas. I like the, uh, uh do we want to, you know what? I'm kind of curious if these weird cabbage-looking things actually drop anything. But the, uh, sort of, uh, I guess it would be like Samba kind of thing going on in the, uh, in the background music for this place is pretty darn cozy. Actually, one more kind of cool note uh, that happens on a lot of these battle maps, they seem to be three-dimensional to some degree, so you'll notice uh, where they're hopping up on top of ledges and whatnot, uh, that uh, they will actually go to those different areas. Uh, it seems to change every now and then, and it's just kind of cool to see them hopping down, uh, up and down off of different terrain in the middle of a fight. Um, on top of this, uh, when there's actually gimmicks to a fight, they do directly just say, hey, this is a gimmick fight. There's a gimmick available <laughs> for you to use. Um, it's kind of refreshingly direct in that way. Actually, come to think of it, I think this is the area that we already went. Uh, I wonder if we get anything for going back through here a second time. Hmm. I guess we're about to find out. Oh, by the way, one thing that I should probably mention that I know I personally care about, but I'm not sure if everybody cares about, but when you're doing these little menu or uh, scene transition things, uh, oftentimes there's a question over, like, whether your controls immediately snap, which, no, it's designed in a, in a good way. Uh, the, you'll just continue running in the direction that you were running, even if your analog stick is now technically pointed in the wrong direction. I know it's a minor detail, but I appreciate when that's actually paid attention to. <laughs> uh, you got a chunky cat over here, too. Uh, there's just cats to talk in uh, in every direction here. So, Basically, if you've uh, if you liked uh, classic uh, Suico games, this is basically that same feeling under a new franchise name here. Clearly, they had the uh, uh, the talent on hand uh, to make more of that uh, classic experience there, and in my mind, they nailed it. I mean, it it's just taken me back to the old uh, uh, to the old uh, kind of Suico two days here then, and uh, it's just nice, you know. Feels great to explore around. Feels great to just look at stuff. Uh, feels great to see the funny little interactions. It's fun to see the team ups between the different characters here. And here we go. There's the chicken field. Get the, uh, the synchronized chickens. I appreciate it. Yeah, like see, see what I mean about this uh, this particular room here. Like we still got the same boxes. We still get the same staircase. Technically same table, slightly different, but the furniture is different. Again, it's it's a minor thing. I know somebody's gonna make a big stink over that, but like it's a, I mean it's an RPG trope as old as time. Um, but uh, you know, it's fine. Ooh, we can pet this dog. What do you mean wine? We need to fix this dog's day. How do we fix his day? Hmm. I guess that's gonna be what we're working on next. There we go. Found a new place to go to. Get those uh, nice uh, sweep over shots of all these places. Apparently this place has solar panels or something. Interesting. And uh, as you do, you just find new town, you explore what's new in there, you see what's uh, what's going on, you see what problems they have, you see what uh, people that look different from the rest of the crowd uh, are there to uh, to go get hired to your team. Um, though I will say, given the amount of exploration I've seen so far, I'm a little bit surprised that in the preview period uh, that they gave here that uh, they actually expected somebody to find all 100 plus people. Um, <laughs> You know, personally, I found, like, four, and two of them I don't know how to recruit yet, so still kind of working on that. I don't know if there's any timed events. I would assume so, because there have been a few cases so far where somebody could be turned down to presumably be hired later. You look like somebody that's a recruit. What's your deal? That is definitely a recruitable character. There's no way they're not. Let's let them chat it out here real quick. Yes, apparently he just chokes out bears, by the looks of it. Okay, apparently elves are a thing. Uh, 
oddly specific. Um, but yeah, there have been little um, uh, little choices here and there uh, that seem to change dialogue as well. Um, actually, come to think of it, technically, I guess you could say that there's five people that have been on the team so far that I've looked at. So we're just looking for more people for the team. I mean, we're recruiting them to the local police, let's be honest. <laughs> Please tell me there's duels. Please tell me there's duels. I think I already did. Does it acknowledge that I already did that? I wonder. You finished your hunt already? No. Oh, and you've done exactly as I asked. Wild <laughs> Like, oh, here we go. I just happen to have their heads in my pocket. <laughs> you know, what? I appreciate this dude's voice acting. He sounds like uh, he sounds like Ned Stark, <laughs> but uh, yeah. All right. So now we got a ranged guy. Fair enough. I mean, they... <laughs> I guess from the back they kind of look like a little bit of a hippie sort, but man, oh man. That dude looks like he, again, doesn't use that crossbow as much as tear stuff in half. Alright. So, alright, apparently we already did their their boar hunting. I, I was kind of curious what the deal was with those. I was exploring around a little bit, do a bit uh, lost in the desert there, and just kind of happened to slaughter a hell of a lot of uh, gigantic boars over there, and... A Thankfully, it acknowledged that, so apparently you can go and uh, get stuff for people before you really need to. That's always nice. Uh, let's see what their deal is exactly. Do we need to give this guy equipment like we did the last few, or no? Uh, actually, right, to add them to the team, we would need an inn, so let's go to that. This one is just dog. This one doesn't get a name. I'm going to assume that the Kickstarters probably named a lot of things, because there's a lot of names, uh, a lot of animals with funny names, and there's a lot of, uh, like, you see pictures of uh, on the wall of people that I assume are developers. Um, so that's kind of neat. Anyway, so we need another uh, back rower, so let's go ahead and switch you over here, and switch you for... Come to think of it, you know what? I wonder if the reason that I can't actually make that guy attack is because he was in the back row. Because he's like a karate sort. Alright. Let's go ahead and save it real quick here. However many hours we're in at this point. Okay, four and a half apparently. Not counting the uh, restarts. So, let's get into the really minor stuff. Like, so, personally, I would say this feels like a very, very solid classic experience. Um, this, again, just, it feels like playing uh, Suiko 2 again. Except it's, you know, on a, on a modern thing that is not a PSP. <laughs> uh, it was one of those that experienced it for the first time on the tiny old handheld, so now you get it on uh, either uh, either Switch or uh, Steam Deck or uh, console. Um, personally, it's felt really nice on the Steam Deck to me, but, you know, again, it, it would definitely fit perfectly fine on a Switch as well. Um, so it's, it's just one of those sit-down-and-enjoy-yourself kind of games. You're not necessarily trying to do, you know, crazy challenge runs or anything so far. No, their name is Hoppy. That's just cute. Ah, you gotta love it. Anyway, so, with that all said, again, it just feels really good. The The only minor stuff that I've run into um, is seemingly all fixed by the day one patch. Uh, so, I don't feel like most of it is even worth bringing up, to be honest, because there's literal, like, technical hiccups I've seen on any preview access thing I've ever seen. Um, you know, the standard, uh, the standard kind of beta version thing of stuff doesn't react well with Steam Deck, so you put it into sleep mode while on handheld mode, and it acts up, and it gives you an issue where you have to replay a section. That's, if, like, to my mind... That is something that has existed on, again, everything I've ever seen a preview for. Um, so I would not count that as much of anything. Um, and overall, yeah. Overall, I'm really loving it. So that is, uh, that's kind of about that. I was kind of hoping to, uh, to at least have some clips or something of the gimmick boss fights. Um, but unfortunately, you know, technical stuff will happen uh, for anyone that is ever recording off a Steam Deck. Uh, Decky Loader seems extremely unreliable for some reason. Um, oh, apparently we are going to have a boss fight.
Well, that's the classic got? encounter. Stand back, oh, Noah. We've only just met in your I don't know if it's really danger. This guy's an absolute killing machine, but... <laughs> Uh how I wish that were true. Since there does seem to be you're very gracious. I can't let you leave with these men. I thought that was gonna take a really weird turn. Okay. Huh. Alrighty then. Interesting. <laughs> uh, like I said, they have some fun with the voice acting. <laughs> I like this lady. She gets to be in the team. Yeah, no need to think about it. That's uh, that's an instant. We'll take that. <laughs> yeah, we hired one. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm just respecting chain of command. I don't know what to tell you. Anyway, so with that being said, um, I just want to say that, uh, that yeah, it, it's refreshing to see kind of uh, just to see the, the kind of old classic formulas uh, kept around for something like this. Um, when it comes to a lot of uh, remakes, uh, you'll typically see stuff like, you know, in, in FF7's case, you'll see, uh, you know, essentially shifting to a complete uh, direct action focus or, you know, in TOR's case, uh, some got upset about the uh, the grinding getting getting taken out and stuff like that. Um, it just feels like a like it's a couple steps removed from the original kind of fully classic formula, as it were. Um, so you still have random fights, you still have uh, kind of exploring around, you still have uh, occasionally vague objectives and whatnot. Oh, by the way, one thing I another thing I actually forgot to uh, to mention from earlier. Uh, the dialogue actually does change based on little things that you do. Uh, like, uh, in the early sections, I ended up getting a password wrong for one of the doors several times. Um, and even in follow-up conversations, they're like, hey, just so you know, here, actually remember the password you <laughs> this time, idiot! Like, it's just neat to get uh, called out in conversations like that. I appreciate those kinds of little details. Um, but yeah, I'm curious uh, how many of y'all folks are... Uh, the potentially already have this on your list, how many are uh, looking into uh, into picking it up pretty soon here. Um, and yeah, just kind of your thoughts on this uh, this project in general. Um, I think, like, I, I'm really loving it. It, it just feels really refreshing to, uh, to kind of see the old classic formula just redone in a way that keeps all of the original little bits and pieces. Like, they don't try to go for the full, like, complete modernization approach, but at the same time, that's not a bad thing in this particular situation, uh, considering that the kind of original ideas there still hold up. A lot of the action of the fights comes from your people combining uh, combining each other in interesting ways, covering each other's weaknesses in interesting ways. Um, like, in many ways, uh, obviously, a lot of this channel is dedicated to, like, Tactics Ogre, Ogre Battle, that kind of stuff. Um, in many ways, it kind of feels like uh, like you're taking some of the sort of uh, auto battling uh, thing from that, um, in terms of the mindset of how you're putting your teams together. Which, again, I was uh, appreciated about uh, Suica Two there. Um, which, granted, that was all of that series, but Two is the one that I played the most, so it's the one that I can give the most experience on. You know, um, so to me, it's it's just been a really refreshing experience that they didn't try to completely reinvent the wheel here. They went for polishing what was already there. Uh, even your main character looks a lot like the Suiko 2 guy, but with the experience of some of the other characters, so they don't come across as dopey. Like, for example, when you see uh, this guy going and talking with their sort of frenemy on the other side there, you get the sense that, yeah, both of them are both competent leaders that are kind of just learning to work together. So when they have their team-up attack there, it feels like, hey, look, they just figured out how to do this cool thing. Their whole sign of friendship thing um, feels like it just came about uh, naturally in that situation. Um, like in Two's case, they had uh, they had a somewhat similar thing that they were going for with uh, your main two in that one, um, and they had their signature pair-up move and whatever else. 
but it didn't get it that much of a chance to breathe. Uh, in this case, you get a solid like hour of being in that particular situation, and they don't immediately end as enemies in that particular situation. It's not, I mean, they're basically applied implied to be on, well, friendly terms there. Um, and it just sort of feels like there's more buildup. Like, instead of directly getting into the fights, it feels like there's more day-to-day -day going on before stuff presumably gets serious down the line there, which, again, I personally really appreciate. It just gives... The, uh, the scenery, more time to breathe, it gives you more time to kind of acclimate yourself with the world and whatnot. Um, so yeah, that's kind of about that. So, I just gotta go say hi to this cat again, I just appreciate it. This dude looks so fluffy. Like, that is that is one very content cat over there. Um, so yeah, that's about that. So, let me know what y'all think, y'all have yourselves a good one, and uh, looks like launch day's tomorrow, so I'll see you then. Take care.